Ahoy guys, welcome to the Red Showcase. This features the main mod as well as Redlantis, the dimension of the former civilization Redlantines. The second mod isn't needed to progress as all items limited to Redlantis can be acquired through a special upgrade. On your way to Redlantis, you must face different challenges and bosses such as the Black Death. Are you strong enough to survive? Don't worry, all challenges are easier if friends are helping out. And with that, say welcome to today's sponsor, Server Pro. Not only that you can play Reds and the add-on Red Lanterns with friends, starting with $5 per month, featuring custom easy-to-use control panels with one-click installations, a dedicated support team helping you with a ton of articles, videos, or you just want to ask a question, then you can just easily message them. To summarize, you get a VPS with DDoS protection, switch between games or even host multiple game servers on one VPS. Get your very own server with the link in the description or the pinned comment. An adventure with your friends. Are you brave enough to challenge the neo Atlantean of Atlantis, or will you go down just like the former civilization? Caution! Before using this mod, consider that it hasn't been updated since a year and the latest version currently 7.2 is not safe to use. It is recommended to downgrade to 7.1.1 as less bugs will appear through your adventures. Stay safe in game! Red Steam Mob Firstly, let's talk about the main feature of this mod, rats. They will spawn in darkness or on garbage blocks. These are found in villages or can be created by crafting a trash can. Fill it with any random blocks to get garbage. If killed, they drop the meat, but also occasionally a red skull, the pelt or the paw. The meat can be cooked and even crafted into a burger. Stuff a raw rat into a pumpkin and to get a jackal lantern. Surely, that won't smell after some weeks. The pelt and the skull can be used for new banner patterns. But why you should kill these cute wild animals? They are vicious. Any chance they get to steal food from you or destroy your crops, they will use it. Not even wolves will prevent them, as they can just dig through the blocks. The red hole AI is broken in the 1.16.5 version. Upon approaching rats, they will try to flee from the player, making it harder to kill these nuisances. For Preventation, the player can tame a cat, which rats fear, or place rat traps. Any food item can be used to attract the animal. But isn't there anything good about them? You can tame a wild rat. In order to do so, you need cheese. Fill a cauldron with milk and it will curdle to cheese. And you got yourself a block of cheese. Chop it up and throw it on the ground so the rat can consume it. The taming process is quite similar to cats, as the rats will fear the player less and less after each consumed cheese. After being tamed, you can access their inventory with a right click. In this GUI, you can see its inventory as well as its gender, its equipped items and current order. A rat can wander aimlessly, stay here, follow the player, hunt prey, either hunt mobs or hunt animals. Not baby mobs though, gather items, harvest crops or grass. Can be manipulated with a rat upgrade, more about it later. And lastly, transport items. Use a cheese staff for certain orders to indicate the rat where it should store items. Apart from specialization with the Reddit upgrades, more about them later, you can also customize their equipment. In the cheese slot, you can give them cheese or any other food item so your Reds can regenerate health. The arrow slot is for red upgrades. The banner slot lets you customize your Reds with a specific banner. The last slot is for helmets. You can use normal helmets, these will grant armor points. You can also equip them with pumpkins or skulls. In total, there are even another 19 special hats that you can use to customize your red. All of these shown here are craftable. Seasonal hats are the party hats which appear on the 5th of June, the official birthday of the mod. The Santa hat during Christmas. The other hats will be covered later on how to obtain them. A red can be dyed by right-clicking it with a specific dye. To remove it, use a dye sponge. Make your red sit on your shoulder or head if you sneak click on it. To remove them, sneak punch the air. One player can transport up to three reds at once. You can also interact with the cage to place them in it. Right click again to release them. Yes, they are red cages for your new tamed pets. These will connect to other cage blocks, but you can even decorate them. 
Most of the SS3 needs plastic for crafting, acquired by breaking garbage over and over again. This process is just like obtaining flint from gravel. Now to the specific decorations. Firstly the ones for just aesthetic looks. Castle, hammocks, both in all colors. Water bowl, seed bowl. Tubes can connect cages to each other, or rats can enter them as well. Interact with an empty hand to create an entrance. The red wheel, even though it seems like a normal decoration item, can be spent by a red, which generates power. Useful with other tech mods. And lastly, the breeding lantern. If you put a male and a female red, the gender can be seen from the GOI, in a cage with a breeding lantern they will mate and create red babies. These will grow up after a few days. Before moving on, you can use the red flute to command all nearby tamed reds with a selected command. Change it by sneak clicking. The current command can be viewed by hovering over the flute. Actually, there's another command, but in the latest version, which I told you to not use. Patrol, which uses the patrol stuff, but I highly recommend you to not use it. It is very buggy could and could potentially corrupt your world. Before talking about red upgrades, let's first look what hostile mobs this mod adds to your world. The Pied Piper is an illager with a flute that will control the minds of wild rats with the music he plays. The music can be heard through various layers of blocks, which can signalize that he spawned. Apart from feathers, he can drop pied wool, which can be used for two recipes. Firstly the pied garbage, this will only spawn pied pipers on top. And the piper head, with it, wild rats won't fear you anymore. Plague. A new villager can be seen wandering around villages. The Plague Doctor trades you various red-themed items. He even buys contaminated food, which is created when wild rats steal from your chests. The Plague Doctor can also spawn as a wandering merchant with a few leashed wild rats. But why exactly do you need him? During your adventures you will find rats that seem to be infested by fleas. These aren't only hostile, but are carriers for the deadly plague. Additionally, they can infect any wild rats and other mobs, meaning as soon as one rat is infected, a whole pandemic can occur. If you get infected, the plague will hinder you to regenerate health. After the effect runs out, no negative consequences arise. The main problem is to survive the 5 minute timer. Apart from the two new hats the doctor trades, the exterminator hat, I haven't found any details to it, I assume it's for decoration, and the plague doctor mask, which reduces the chance to be infected with the plague. He also sells various uncraftable cures. Cures? Craftable are assorted vegetables. Not only are they are a delicacy, they can be used to acquire the bundle of sweet smelling herbs, which only have a 10% chance of curing you. Two cures can be bought from the doctor. The leech with a 50% chance and the old treacle with 25%. Combine all three items to acquire the plague stew, which gives a 100% curing chance. Back to the plague rats. Apart from the normal drops, you can find rarely a plague essence. It has various uses such as the purifying liquid. Combine it with garbage to acquire purified garbage, which will only spawn normal rats. The potion bottle itself can cure mobs with plague and zombie villagers. Occasionally, I have experienced that the Plague Doctor himself will throw this potion at you if you are infected or at a Plague Rat, so it's worth a try to just visit him. Another use for the essence is deceased garbage, which only spawns Black Rats. Be careful with this. The Red Radius staff is very handy. With it, you can determine the specific search or harvest radius of a Rat. Firstly bind it and then interact on a block to start adjusting the radius. This is broken in the latest version. With four essence, one is able to craft a plague doctorate. It will transform any villager into a plague doctor. Lastly, one is able to craft the red bow essence, a special die which grants the red a rainbow color. During the nether adventures, you will find a new hellish mob, the demon reds. Upon death, they can drop nether cheese, either it can be consumed or used for various red upgrade recipes. Also can be crafted into crimson liquid, which transforms a demon rat into a normal one. This is also the item used to craft the buggy patrol staff. Red upgrades. If you open the inventory of your rat, the arrow slot is used to apply upgrades. These aren't permanent and can be switched anytime, if you feel like it. Modifiers. These are three basic upgrades which modify one stat of your normal rat. 
Strength for attack, health for hearts and armor for armor points. All three combined make the warrior upgrade, a better version of the three prior ones. The last level is Battle God, which grants your pet 500 health, 50 armor and 50 attack, but also requires a wither star. A real beast, it will even have an enchanted glint. And then the special stats manipulator is the Voodoo Doll. If your rat is nearby, it will intake the damage you received instead. This will be evenly distributed if more than one rat is equipped with this ability. It also counts with 100 base health and fast health regen. Speed will make your rat quicker. The flute denier will not listen to any flute commands. Bow allows your rat to use a bow for combat. If you prefer crossbows, there's an upgrade for that as well. These are slower, but do more damage. A crazy upgrade is the TNT Red. The first level will injure the Red and other entities around it upon attacking, as the Red will just go poof. My Red only survived because it has a health upgrade. Use the TNT Expert to prevent the Red and allies to be harmed by the explosion. Additionally, your pet doesn't take any damage from explosions or falling anymore. While we talk about immunity, there are various upgrades that make your Red immune to certain things. Poison resistance against poison with the magic, extra breath against suffocation and drowning, asbestos red against fire, lava, magma, damage protection includes all prior immunities, even fall damage resistance. To finish this, we've got the jury rigged upgrade. It allows you to combine two upgrades but cannot be removed or modified afterwards. Right click to open it after it was selected, the upgrade will permanently seal off. Automation. This is the probably biggest section of the whole upgrades, automation. This allows you to use your rats for slavery and make them work for you. Firstly, we got crafting. For this, you need a rat crafting table made with cheese. Place your upgraded rat on top and interact with the table. In the first slot, place the desired item which should be crafted. In your hotbar labeled input, add the used items for the crafting recipe. This can be automated with the transporting and gathering. A very handy upgrade for this will be the blacklist and whitelist upgrade. While the blacklist will hinder rats from interacting with items that are on the list, the whitelist does the opposite, only the items on the list rats will interact with. Another two upgrades can help you with the transportation. Firstly, the platter, which allows rats to transport whole stacks. And the ender upgrade. Not only will this mutate your rat to a black entity with glowing eyes, it can also teleport around at will, allowing very fast transportation. Currently, this ability seems to be bugged. All of the following upgrades will change the harvest command. The replanter will make your rat automatically replant crops. Lumberjack will fall trees. Planter will make the rat plant any health saplings or seeds. Lastly, the milkman, which will instead of transporting items, it will transport fluids. If set on harvest, it will milk nearby cows. I used mechanism. There are two upgrades that change the limit of how much fluid can be transported at once. One is for 1k and one up to 5k. Unfortunately, this doesn't work for me, so I can't really show you it, as the rats just sit there. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but yeah, let's continue. Your rat can even be a miner. With the miner upgrade, it will try to dig to ores through blocks when set on harvest. The advanced miner can determine which ores the rat should mine, acting like a whitelist. If we are already talking about mining, your rat can create a whole quarry. Firstly, get the upgrade and craft the quarry block. Then add the deposit command on the quarry and select harvest. The rat will create a whole pit with platforms so it can deposit items into the block. The block placer will place down blocks with the harvest command. Tell the rat where to place blocks by selecting the home position. Or doubling will let your rat eat ores it will then end up pooping out. This smelts the ore. Shears will shear any nearby sheep and even mushrooms. Animal breeder will breed any nearby animals when set on harvest. Rats can take food items from nearby chests. Fishman will make your rat fish at a nearby water source. It can find junk, fish or treasures. Tick accelerator will speed up the tick above or under any block. Works for crops and machines. The disenchanter will disenchant held books, while enchanter will enchant books. This is boosted by nearby bookshelves. The chef lets you cook raw food, but with this upgrade even some delicacies are unlocked, just like cheese to string cheese and assorted vegetables to confit bldi, which has 1k saturation. 
And then the food item needs another upgrade, the gem cutter. Firstly, give it coal, which creates little black squash balls. Combine it with potato pancakes, a new food item made out of potatoes. The created worm can be converted into a centipede, hmm, yeah, by the gem cutter. Lastly, the cook will roast the worm into potato niche. Yummy. To finish this category, there are four upgrades for energy at transport. Each level let the red transport more energy per tick. Mounts. This allows your pet to basically have a mount on their own. After it is slain, there's a cooldown until it respawns. The chicken mount gives your red a chick. This allows it to be speedy. The strider has 20 health and can walk on lava. And the mount is the beast. Again, a faster one with 40 health. And lastly, the iron golem. Really do be looking like a transformer. Respectively, it is a bit slower. Mutation. Mutations primarily change the appearance of rats and also give them special abilities. The demon rat resembles the hostile creature from the nether. It is lava and fireproof and will ignite enemies. It also comes with a health and attack booster. The dragon rat is not only immune to fire but can also breathe fire and fly. Watch out as this will set blocks on fire. It also comes with health, attack and armor booster. A bee rat will fly, poison enemies and also randomly cause crops and plants to grow. A carrot can be eaten indefinitely. No saturation, but I mean, a free food. If your rat is equipped with the angel upgrade, it will respawn after one minute. After death, a ghost will appear which cannot be interacted with. Aquatic turns your rat into a fish, making it swim fast and also breathe underwater. Flight grows wings on the back of your pet. This allows them to use the air instead of normal land. Very handy for transportation. And that transforms your rat into a skeleton. This prevents Undead from targeting your rat. The festive upgrade will make your rat gift you a random item every hour. This is crafted with the time-limited Santa hat, only obtainable during winter. And to finish this chapter, the Aristo rat allows rats to drop coins upon killing enemies or randomly. These are needed to access Red Lantis. More about it later. Some upgrades cannot be combined by default as the GI will hinder this. This applies on mutations and automation. There's nothing mentioned about this, you just have to try it out. Items. Now to some missing items that we haven't talked about. You can automate cheese making with the curdling station. On the side, milk can be inserted and cheese can be extracted. The red whistle sends all tamed rats to their home position. Set this with a cheese staff. The red sack can be used to stuff rats into it for transportation. It is also used to craft the capture net, a portable capturing device that rounds up all tamed rats within 30 blocks in one sack. Interact with an arrow to put your rat on it. Upon hitting, it will then deploy your rat. A multiplayer item are the red papers. It allows the ownership to be transferred. The handy cheese can also be used to craft a new banner pattern. Cheese. <laughs> a decorative block is the red upgrade. It has no uses. The main hole cover is another decorative block, used as a metal trapdoor, which doesn't need a redstone signal. Another handy feature is the red attractor. Just like moths to light, this will attract rats if it receives a redstone signal. This even works when you don't have a piper head equipped. Just as a side note, rats will dance to music. Bosses! Now let's talk about some bosses. The Black Death is created by giving a Plague Doctor a Plague Tome, which can be bought from him or if this specific villager is struck by lightning. The tome can also be dropped very rarely from Plague Rats. The boss won't directly attack but will use summons to destroy your life. This is most commonly Plague Rats. The other mob is the Plague Cloud. It will inflict you with the Plague. The last option is the Plague Beast. He mostly only does melee damage but can, like the others, inflict you with Plague. I would recommend building a structure like this. This prevents the plague beasts and rats from getting to you. If they spawn outside of the area, you can destroy some ladders or use a trapdoor to not be attacked. Another plus is the plague clouds won't be able to harm you as the ceiling prevents them to shoot at you, otherwise you risk being overrun. Apart from common drops like bundle of sweet smelling herbs, he can also drop his black death scythe. It can summon plague clouds but is also a very powerful melee weapon. The other drop is the Black Death Mask. Not only do you have a reduced chance of getting plague, but plague rats won't attack you anymore, even if provoked. The other boss is the Red King. To summon him, you need a bowl of filth crafted out of compressed garbage. His main attack is to throw rats at you. 
his drops feature the Red King hat, an accessory, and the Tangled Tails. This is used for the Gilded Red Flute. It will fire rats at the target. These spawned in rats can be tamed. Red Lantis. Now, that was the content of the main mod rats. The add-on Red Lantis adds more upgrades and a new dimension for you to explore, including new bosses. Special Red Upgrade. Firstly, before we talk about how to enter this realm, I need to show you the uses of the Archaeologist hat. Occasionally, you can encounter a husk or a skeleton in jungles wearing a peculiar hat. This is used for a special upgrade the Archaeologist. Most items found in Redlantis can be scavenged with an Archaeologist rat. Give your rat one of the convertible items and it will transform them to the Redlantis variant. In case you play without the dimension, it's quite handy actually. Some examples are the Pirate Hat, an exchange of the Piper Hat, or the Pirate Cutlass for an Iron Sword. Togas can be used to decorate your rats. Just right-click it to equip and right-click again with another toga to de-equip. Now let's look how you can enter Atlantis. You may remember the tiny coins Arista rats drop after they kill enemies or randomly. These are fragments of a token which is used to create the portal. Fragments are dropped by the Pied Piper, while the Red King and the Black Death have a chance to drop chunks. If enough parts are available, it will create the mysterious token. There is also a very, very, very rare chance a full token can drop from a normal rat. Upon creating the portal and entering it, you will be invited by a tropical dimension filled with rats and new mobs. But don't mistake this place as a peaceful one to be in. New hostile creatures await your presence. Be careful. Before talking about special structures, let's take a look at the normal generation. Quite commonly is the hostile feral beast, slashing with its massive claws to tear you apart. He drops his claws, which can be made into a new weapon, the Bucknax. It can target multiple enemies at once. A mob found here is the red fish. You can digest it or kidnap in a bucket. The most annoying hostile mob is the Red Lantine Spirit. The flying behavior quite smart to ghasts. They will shoot at any player that they spot. The drop is the Red Lantine Spirit Flame used for various recipes. Another mob one can come across is the Red Lantine Rod Bot. A quite easy enemy. They drop the Red Bot Barrel. When is able to craft the Redling Gun, you can place the Red on it and it will defend your home. Before continuing, the Red Glove a flower only growing in Red Lantis is used for some recipes, like the block of Red Glove. Occasionally you can also find cheese ore here. Ghost Ship! During your adventures you can find a floating ship filled with red pirate spirits. These can drop two new items, the Ghost Pirate Cutlass and the Ghost Pirate. They are also craftable with the ectoplasma they drop. In the treasure room of the pirate one is able to find a special uncraftable item, the Red Lantine Officer Hat. It's a decorative hat, but also used to craft the special banner pattern Red and Sickle. In the middle of the ship, you will see a ghostly bell. It can only be rung during night time, which summons the flying Dutch Red, a vicious ghost pirate which shouldn't be underestimated. He will use his sword to melee or to swing ghostly copies at you. Occasionally, he can also shoot bombs at you. I recommend fighting him in the ship's hold to prevent you to fall from the ship and also because he kinda bugs out, he drops the flying Dutch Red's ship wheel and ectoplasma. Runaways. Another structure are the runaways. Desolate, only a soul air siren decorating this path. If interacted with it, the Red Baron will be spawned. It's quite an easy boss fight actually, as the plane only needs a maximum of three arrows to be taken down. His attacks mainly consist out of shooting you with a minigun. His drops are biplane wing, a crafting resource and the aviator cap, another decorative hat. Red Lantern Automaton. For this boss you need a special item obtainable in the ghost ship or dropped by feral beasts, spirits or red bots. The Red Lantern Automaton hat. The core is crafted with the gem of Red Lantis, a new ore found in this dimension or also craftable. Create an iron golem shape with the core in the middle, surrounded by raw cheese marble. The red automaton will use either his saw blade to cut you into pieces or shoot lasers out of his second hand if you are too far away. The fight is quite boring, honestly. It's just running away, healing and then again smacking. 
Due to the amount of damage he does, I recommend having really good armor. His drops are the Ancient Sawblade and the Arcane Technology. Neon Ratlantine. This boss must be created with the Vial of Consciousness thrown at a Feral Ratlantine. It requires various ingredients such as Spirit Flame, Red Glove and Feral Claws. This boss uses mainly indirect attacks. He himself will only summon portals that will shoot lasers at you. If you are hit by them, you will be inflicted with wither, levitation and glowing. Another attack is to fling blocks at you or to summon lightning. Be aware of your surroundings, as plague doctors can be hit by these summoning <laughs> the black death. He drops his psychonic red brain, which is used in various recipes, but you can even make a block out of it. I don't know why. <laughs> With all four mob drops, Owen is able to craft the Red Lantis armor. To craft it, the new or old column is needed. Every equipment piece has a special ability. Firstly, the tools. The sword will summon a spectral red that does six more damage. Axes won't be damaged when mining leaves, while the pickaxe won't be damaged while mining stone. Sand won't damage the shovel and the hoe will till nine dirt blocks at once. To finish tools, the bow fires stronger arrows twice as fast. The armor is not only very powerful, but with each piece, a spectral arrow will protect you from nearby enemies, damaging and knocking them back. Red upgrades. They, these use various drops of bosses or items only obtainable from Red Lantis or the Archaeologist upgrade. Two mounts upgrades are now available. The Automaton with 250 health but very slow movement and the Biplane mount. 300 health and the ability to fly, also to shoot with a minigun. Note the mutations. Psychic transforms your red into a red lantern. Extremely quick health regeneration, summons portal to attack our targets and launches blocks with telepathy. Ethereal allows your red to face through blocks or float. Retinator converts your pet into a half machine, half red. Will fire lasers and gets 80 armor points. Buccaneer, again an automatic firing cannon. Five attack damage, inflicting plague and poison debuff are abilities of the Feral Bite. And the last upgrade you will ever need is the Non-Believer. With 1k health, 100 armor, 100 attack and extremely fast health regeneration. To finish this large showcase, we only have one more upgrade, the Combiner. It comes with two new machines, the Red Combiner and Upgrade Separator. The Combiner lets you combine any upgrades, doesn't matter what variations, which allows you to avoid the upgrade restrictions. For this process, you need the Red Combined Upgrade and the Combiner Block. On the left, you can insert the Combined, on the right, which upgrade the Combined should be infused with. At the bottom, the machine uses Red Lantis Gems as fuel. The separator works the opposite direction. Throw your infused combine upgrade on top and you will get back all upgrades and the gems. The combine upgrade will be destroyed. Yes, yeah, spent way too much time in this world, is it normal that they don't attack? Just staring at me, judging how I am wasting the time of my life to showcase a random mod. They are just stand yeah, the yeah, they are just staring. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, subscribe or not. You decide. Stay safe in game. Ciao.